Hello, friends. I just want to jump on here and let you know about two exciting things that are starting in April, and you do not want to miss it. I want to invite you to personally be a part of The Remnant, a prophetic community, which the Lord laid on my heart. If you didn't listen to the podcast episode um, that's titled The Remnant, then you can go back and you can kind of hear how this began. But basically, God um, began speaking to me about a bunch of people just saying that they needed to be in community with other prophetic individuals. And so what I'm going to do is a year long commitment. We're going to meet twice a month for 90 minutes. It is a hybrid model. So we'll be interacting with one another. It won't be just hop on and just get a bunch of teachings and type your question into the chat. It will be us interacting with one another because the prophetic is all about relationship. And I want to create healthy individuals that are in a prophetic community with one another, where we can submit what God is saying to us, where we can hear what others have to say about that. We can get feedback. We can move together as a group, as a community in moving the message forward that God has. And so I invite you to join that. And it's um, going to be right now, it's on early bird special through March 22nd. So you can go to my website at debbiekitterman.com slash shop, and you can sign up for either the year in advance, or you can sign up for the monthly payments. Um, And it is at, as I said, the lowest cost that I can right now. And then that price is going to increase on March 23rd and we're going to begin the first week in April and you can see all the dates lined out if you miss a date not to worry because you'll get a link to the audio and the video so that you can follow along and still be part of the community on those times when you miss but this is something I'm really excited about and I want to invite you to join me and a group of other individuals that really want to have relationship with other people who operate in the prophetic it doesn't matter what level you're at it doesn't matter if you're a newbie and operating in prophetic ministry or you're a seasoned prophet. We want to be moving together in community because that's what God has called us to do. And the next thing I want to invite you to be a part of is my live Dare to Hear training classes part two. Yep. We just recently finished the part one and we had a fabulous time of coming together. And so those start April 19th and it is the lowest price that it will be to um, through March 22nd as as well. And so the price will increase after that, but you want to join us for those six weeks of prophetic teaching, prophetic activation, and really giving you tools to equip you for taking the prophetic forward in your own life and in the lives of others, as you step out to do prophetic ministry in the marketplace, as you minister to your family, as you begin to hear what God has to say. And of course, you know, me activation, activation, activation. That's what it's all about. I'm really excited about both of these opportunities. And so I just want to invite you to partner with me, to journey with me. And again, you can go do that at debbiekitterman.com. If you missed the podcast where I talked about the remnant and um, the story behind it, I invite you to go check that out so that you can hear about that. It's really God taking it dare to hear to the next level because we need to be in community and we need to be equipping one another and iron sharpens iron and God is calling us to do that. And so I'm really excited and I want to invite you to do that. And I kept the cost as low as possible for the remnant just to cover administrative costs that I have for some of the things that I needed to do to facilitate um, our meeting together for that entire year. So I'm really excited. And oh, for those of you that are being like, I don't have PayPal, no worries. I hooked my square up to my website. So you can just now pay um, with your credit card via the safe portal with either your choice, PayPal or square. And so that's set up as well, as well as uh, monthly donations. Those are coming soon soon so that you can sign up to donate monthly to the ministry. Again, we're a 501c3 nonprofit. And without further ado, here is today's podcast episode. Enjoy. And I look forward to hoping to have you join me for one of those or both of those things beginning in April. Hello, I'm Debbie Kitterman, and welcome to Dare to Hear the Podcast, where we equip you and challenge you to dare to hear the voice of God. Well, I'm really excited to introduce to you my next guest. Her name is Venner Alston. She's PhD. She travels worldwide communicating hope and offering kingdom solutions to individuals um, and society issues. Uh, Through Schools of the Prophet, Venner is committed to equipping believers across the globe to do the work of the ministry. She is founder and apostle of Global Leadership University and Global Outreach 
Outreach Ministry and Training Center and founder of the Exceptional Women Mentoring Group. She lives in Wisconsin, and uh, we'll tell you how you can connect with her at the end of the podcast. But she wrote this book, Next Level Believer, and we're going to talk about it today. Um, It's Advanced Strategies for Godly Kingdom Influence. And I know we all want that, especially in the times and seasons we're living in today. So it's a very timely message, Venner. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me today. Uh, you're so welcome. Well, I, um, you hit it hard at the beginning of the book, but in a good way. Um, and I, and so I want to talk a little bit about that. And, um, you start like, I think it's on, on page 16, 15, 16, and you start with this powerful declaration for us about declaring our identity. Can you tell why that was so important for you to start the book with that? One of my processes when I'm writing a book is I write from a prophetic vantage point. Mm -hmm. So I'm praying through it. Uh, Even before I start to write it, I'm praying and I'm asking God, what do you want me to say? You know, I have some superficial, like an annotated table of contents Mm -hmm. uh, and some idea of what I want to say, but not fully. And so I write very much by prophetic unction. And when I am writing, I try to open my heart and my spirit in a way that uh, when I'm hearing God in the writing and I hear a prophetic declaration, Mm -hmm. I'll just stop and just put it right in there. So that's how those kinds of things happen in my writing, writing in that moment, I just heard God say it. Or sometimes I feel like there's a need for a declaration or a prophetic word. And I'll ask the Lord to let me hear something Mm -hmm. that would benefit people no matter where they are, no matter what culture, no matter where they find themselves reading this book. Let me say something out of the realm of the spirit. That's that so good. In their lives. Oh, that's so good. And I love that because, you know, this podcast is all about the prophetic, daring to hear the voice of God and really equipping people. So I think that's really good because sometimes we'll hear something and we don't necessarily flow with that. And I like that you write under the prophetic unction. Actually, there, in my opinion, there's no other way to write. Otherwise, it's me and I don't want just me. OK, so I have to say, like. I read everything in a book. Okay. So like I read from the beginning to the end, I read the acknowledgements and who you're thinking. Um, I read the forward. I just, I just like to read everything because it helps me to understand who you are a little bit. And I have to say that your introduction was so power packed of so many things that I'm like, okay, all of my questions are like in the first 25 pages of the book. So here's another one for you. Um, You say every new season, our warfare strategies must change. So talk to us a little bit about that, because I think that sometimes we just think, well, these are our strategies and they're all going to apply. They don't always all apply. We wear, uh, we not only do we need uh, new warfare strategies, we actually wear a new war, we must wear a new war mantle in every season, which means that, first of all, we need to understand how the powers of darkness have escalated against us and what are the strategies for this season to overcome them. Right. So maybe in the last season, uh, it may have been heavy worship, right? Right. Uh, But in a new season, God may use the prophetic decree. We need to understand how Mm -hmm. God is purposing that we would overcome our enemy. We have this large arsenal. And in this arsenal, it's not always just picking up just that one weapon. It's really letting the Spirit of God tell us which weapon for this fight. Mm -hmm. So that's every season. It's a new fight, right? So what weapon am I using? Um, I I read something the other day. I'm not a golfer, so I'm going to butcher this analogy. Um, But this was about a golfer. And and they were talking about out of all the clubs that golfers carry around, this particular golfer uses one one iron. He uses the same club all the time. Mm -hmm. And no matter whether he's putting or he's driving, he keeps using this same golf club and he does very well well at some point he's struggling right because that really isn't the right weapon and it may not be as difficult Mm. to accomplish what you want if you would just simply use the club 
for that space and place. It's the same thing as spiritual warfare. We're all, we're going to win because we fight in faith, right? But right. I think sometimes when we don't understand how to use uh, what we need for that season, for that fight, it just can be a little bit more difficult. Mm-hmm. That's really good. I really like that analogy. Uh, I, I like analogies like that. I'm not a golfer either, so I would have not even understood. But I understand, you know, there's specific irons that they use for different things based on what they do. And if we keep using the same tool for warfare, um, then we're missing exactly the the tool that God wants us to get it done. So that was such a great explanation. So, okay. In the next book, next level believer, you talk about influence a lot. I mean, it's a topic throughout the entire book and you say that we're supposed to be the light of the world and that this is a picture of influence. So can you unpack how us being the light of the world is a picture of influence? So I talk about, uh, and I'm just looking here, I give us a definition. Uh, You have your book, so that's page 18. Yes. Uh, I give us a definition, and I talk about influence being defined as the capacity or power of persons or things to be a compelling force on. Mm -hmm. So when we think about the fact that we are anointed by God, called by God to be a compelling force in our in our culture, then Mm -hmm. light is a compelling force to overcome darkness. So when I understand that I am the light of the world, then I am a compelling force that is anointed by God, not in the strength of my flesh, but through the power of the Holy Ghost. Wherever I go, I have the capacity to affect kingdom change because when when I come in, light comes in. And wherever there's darkness, darkness is always going to recognize the light by doing what? Backing up. Mm Mm-hmm. That's so good. And and then just flipping over a couple of pages on page 21, you say as influencers, we must take our place in culture. We, do, we must. And, and I think, I think right now that the church is struggling with taking our place in culture. So can you kind of talk a little bit about what that might look like as just being influencers? You know, I grew up in a time um, that we were very much separatist. We weren't intending to be separatists. I came through mainstream Pentecostalism. Mm -hmm. So we majored on keeping ourselves separate from the world. And we were mothered and fathered by a generation that uh, their spiritual fathers and mothers, they didn't look at television. Mm -hmm. Uh, Radio was okay. You know, our pastor talked to us a lot about getting saved and not even being able to, I don't think he could wear a tie clamp or something was something really Mm. rigid like that. And as they knew better, they did better. And so what happens is we have this mindset that we're the church and we're sitting in this, in in the buildings where we gather with the four walls and the ceiling, that's the church. No, we are the ecclesia and we are moving in and out of places and spaces. So because I'm there and I am an influencer, that means I have supernatural capacity to influence that environment, which is really where I have my measure of rule and my sphere of authority. So I can be an influencer influencer everywhere, whether I'm a mom in a child care center, whether I am a doctor seeing patients, whether I am a lawyer and I have clients, it doesn't matter what, what your calling or your vocation is. Every place that you are, you can influence and whether it's government and we are struggling because one of the key weapons that the enemy has used against us is divisiveness. Mm-hmm. So we keep dividing and we keep dividing over issues, not recognizing that while we're dividing over over issues, we are at some level negating the larger assignment to influence the culture for the kingdom of God. He says, go out and compel men, which is influence. That's why I wanted to read that definition. The Bible tells us to compel men. And it didn't just say, wait until they come to church. Mm -hmm. Men and women, young and old, doesn't mean wait until they they come to church because we spend what, about four hours through COVID, even less than that. In, in the four walls, in the ceiling. But I spend more time in my everyday walking around life. And that is where I'm called to be an influencer. That's good. That's good. I really like that. Now, you also say, um, I'm going to have you define spiritual warfare because you do that on page 41 in the book. But um, you also talk about that this is not just another book on spiritual warfare. And so we're, we're going to talk in a minute about what it means to be the next Belver Believer. But you talk about how we... Um, 
are supposed to execute our assignment. So can you define spiritual warfare for our viewers and listeners and then why you say this is more than just a book on spiritual warfare? It's more than a book on spiritual warfare because when we understand that there is a war of two kingdoms Mm -hmm. and the war, the realm that we are fighting in is in the second heaven location there. And we're warring, right? Because God has a plan for us. Mm -hmm. And the enemy is positioning himself so that we don't fully move into the plan of God for our lives. So we are warring against powers of darkness that have purposed that we would not walk and live in the best that God has for us. Ephesians 6 does a really good job. And I love the other scripture I really love on on warfare is 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5. He says, for the weapons of our war fair are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down of imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So understanding that there are two kingdoms, it's the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness, and the kingdom of darkness is resisting us. We are here to fulfill the will and the mandate of the kingdom of God. So God has provided all the arsenal, all the weaponry we need to overcome our enemy. It's a spiritual fight. We can't, we won't win uh, with human intellect Mm -hmm. because it's a spiritual fight. We see the manifestations in the earth realm, but we're warring in the spirit realm. Now, Colossians tells us we are seated in the heavenly places from that position, our position in Christ, the way that we should war should be from that seated place with Christ, hearing the revelation, hearing the strategies of heaven, and then walking that out in our earthly life. Yeah, I like that. And when I was reading that, I I like, this is one of the best descriptions, definitions of spiritual warfare that I had heard Venner. So thank you for that. Because, um, you know, my husband and I used to pastor like a year. Um, We've, you know, recently, it's been a year since we've stepped down from that. But our last thing that we did was talk on spiritual warfare. And I think the body of Christ um, is remiss in really fully understanding it. And we came from a Pentecostal charismatic church and denomination. And I was surprised at people that had, you know, were, had been sitting in church for over 50 years that had no clue about spiritual warfare. So I was like, Oh man, I so wish I had her definition when we were teaching this. Cause it was, it's so good. It's so good. Um, Okay. So what does it mean to be a next level believer and what steps can we take to step up our faith to the next level? To me, what it means to be a next level believer is to first of all, understand that the the kingdom of God is forward moving. Mm. It is progressive. It moves forward every day. It moves forward in every generation. Every generation has an assignment that they're called to fulfill. So I can fulfill that if I am not understanding that I, I progress from faith to faith from glory to glory. Someone actually got on my feed on Facebook and they talked about, they asked a question about uh, where do you find next level in the Bible? And I said, I see it when I read something like faith to faith and glory to glory. I said, mm-hmm. That's where that's where I see it. And so understanding that we ascend, right? So if I'm ascending, it means that where I was, I'm not there now. I've moved. I've gone up. So so I I really believe that the kingdom is forward moving and that what it means to be a next level believer means that every day I am hearing God for revelation for my life and that revelation produces movement. Mm-hmm. And that movement is forward. That's it good. doesn't mean we won't take a hit. It doesn't mean that we won't have a setback. But one of the things I say is every setback is a set up for a step up. Oh, I like that. Say that again. <laughs> every setback is a set up for a step up. Oh, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> so when we get that, it means that even if I, I, I stumble, because, you know, we don't always, God says it perfectly. Mm-hmm. We don't always hear it perfectly. Yes. Okay. We don't always perceive it perfectly. So I'm going to make 
missteps and, and but there's grace right there's yeah. just, just grace and he helps me where i need strengthening and so we just keep moving so to be a next level believer what that literally means is you keep moving forward and we move with the voice of god with the presence of god through his word right it all agrees mm-hmm. and um we just we keep growing and our capacity keeps enlarging and we're not stagnant we're not just sitting I talk in this book about living in the waiting room. Yes. And living in the waiting room simply means that we're not really warring because I don't really think I need to do that. And so the enemy loves that because that means I'm ignorant of how he's operating against me. So then I'm not fully walking in the in, in what God has for me. So so because I don't believe I have to do that. So then I get overwhelmed. Right. And so, you know, life is less than perfect. And OK, I don't have to war. I'm just waiting uh, for the Lord to come and get me and take me to heaven. Really? You're living in the waiting room. You live simply living, waiting for the expiration date on your earth journey to be over so you can go into eternity to be with the Lord. But he didn't just leave us here for that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was actually going to ask you a question about that because you talked about the maintenance trap and it was that whole concept of living in this waiting room and just doing enough. So just kind of, I was really intrigued by the maintenance trap. I was like, I think I've fallen into that category at some time. So just kind of expand a little bit more on that little piece. You know, I I learned this uh, from observing uh, my mother. Um, uh, I was really involved in her life. Uh, all the time, but really, uh, she passed away at 90. Mm -hmm. Um, I was her right in her life in her eighties. Right. And I started noticing something every day uh, with her was like another day. Mm -hmm. And I would, she and I were having a conversation and I said, you know, mom, I said, I don't want you to live in the waiting room. I want you to, to have things that you get up looking forward to that you're expecting ways that you're going to hear God. She was a powerful intercessor. Oh my God. (laughs) She was a powerful intercessor. And I started noticing that in the last, years, like the last two years of her life, you know, she was very still and she was listening, but I didn't see a lot of the uh, proactive, oh, we're going to go before God and just pull this, pull this down. Uh, And so I'm just like, don't. And so that's why I learned that concept, just watching her, because uh, she felt like she knew when her exit was going to be. And uh, she wasn't far from wrong. And um, she waited. She was just waiting for her time to be up. And I found that a lot of believers do that. One day looks like another day and looks like another day and looks like another day. And we're just waiting for the rapture. You know, I say whether he comes uh, in uh, to get me through bringing me into eternity because my life is over. Over, or whether the rapture comes, whatever person believes, if the rapture, rapture comes, I am called to occupy until he comes, which mm-hmm. means I am to labor, to push back the darkness, and using the arsenal that he's given me every single day until God says, your work is finished. Mm, and that's good. And you actually wrote a book, Next Love a Believer, that really helps equip us yeah. to do that, to occupy our space and push back the darkness. I, um, This was so good, Venner. Now, okay, I have a few more questions before we're done. Because you talk about an identity and our influence is really a, a concept of this book that you weave throughout. But you talk about our spiritual anointing being linked to our identity. How is that? And explain a little bit. So when I understand my identity, I I, I talk about these three concepts, identity, purpose, and destiny. So purpose is the reason that I exist. God had something in mind when he said, I'm going to create Venner. And so within uh, who I am, everything that I needed in my personality and my DNA structure, everything that I needed, God wove that into me. There's a reason that I am here. So my purpose is my why. My identity is linked with who I am. And to fully understand my who, I must understand who Jesus is. So my who is linked to the who of Jesus. Who is he? You know, he's the pattern son. He's the redeemer. He's the redeemer. 
All right. And so looking at him, understanding who he was and is, that helps me to understand who I am. And then my destiny is the, is the, is the stuff that I'm called to do. And so understanding that and looking at Luke chapter nine, verses one and two, the Bible says he called them to himself and he gave them power and he gave them authority, which means that I have legal right given to me by God to do something and be something. Mm. I don't have to ask for permission to do that. Mm-hmm. It's That's built so in. <laughs> That's so good. Okay. Okay. So now because Dare to Hear is all about the prophetic. I had to ask this question um, because you talk about like per- reformers, you write that prophets are used in every generation to carry the message of the great commission. In what ways are prophecy and prophets still misunderstood? Cause they are. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So there's this, there was this teaching that was around in some spaces around that once the Bible was written, there was no need for prophets or prophecy. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Paul says to the church, covet first uh, Corinthians 14, he said, you know, you should desire spiritual gifts, but earnestly desire prophecy. Mm -hmm. And so he talks about that, that earnestly desire, covet, burn with passion, deep desire to prophesy. Why? Because when we prophesy, we edify, we exhort, and we comfort, right? We strengthen the body of believers. Prophecy is, is not a suggestion of what God would like to do. It is not God questioning what should he do. It is God revealing from that timeless place, speaking out of that timeless place into time, revealing what he intends to do. Mm-hmm. And every generation must uh, must experience the impact of the prophet's ministry. And if we look from the beginning all the way through current, we can see the ministry of prophecy it's alive in the earth. We've had the Kim Clements and, you know, we've had, uh, uh, we've had the Elishas and the Elijahs and in every generation, God raises up strong prophets. We have the Chuck Pierces, we have those, and we have those that no one knows their names, mm. right? Yes. I don't have to be a well-known general in the body to be prophetic. And that was the point I was trying to make in that chapter mm-hmm. that yes, we have the Ephesians for 11, 12, 13 governmental gifts, DOMA, but we also have the believer, yeah. the, the person that is not necessarily called to fivefold ministry that is anointed with the charis, the grace gift, the grace gift of prophecy that can hear a prophetic word, that can discern the voice of God. And when we hear it, then we, we, we declare it, right? Mm-hmm. And so this is what it means to reform. We Reformation comes by is a manifestation of bringing something that is broken back into alignment. So I need to see it prophetically. I need to discern it. I need to know what it is, what's operating, what is God's strategy, what's going on. And all of those are prophetic dimensions. And as we declare that, and we begin to uh, labor in those areas, we will begin to see reformation, reforming. Mm -hmm. We will see correction. Our our nations, the nations of the earth, we need reformation, which means that we need prophetic voices that are alive and strong and and full of faith and confidence to say, I'm going to declare the word of the Lord. And for the person that's watching or listening that says, I know I'm a prophet and I know I'm on the earth, but I'm afraid I'm going to say to you, say it afraid. Keep declaring and keep declaring when you hear the word of the Lord and you know God wants you to declare that in the earth. I want to encourage you. Your knees may be knocking. You may be trembling. But when you know you have the word of the Lord in your mouth, go ahead and say it because we are to obey God Mm -hmm. rather than man. Amen. Ooh, that is so good. (laughs) We could totally end the podcast there, but I have one more question for you. (laughs) And that is in the final section of this book, you write about the supernatural arsenal and our supernatural capacity. So can you talk just a little bit about that? Because I think it goes, um, I want to, I want to whet their appetite. So they'll grab a copy of the next level believer. We are accustomed to thinking about our weapons when we think about the helmet of salvation, uh, the shield of faith, Mm -hmm. etc. I really felt like when I was writing this book, I felt like God was revealing to me that 
the gifts of the spirit, like prophecy, faith. So we have what the revelatory gifts, Mm -hmm. we have the power gifts, we have the utterance gifts. So we have all of these gifts of the spirit, uh, the gift of a word of wisdom, the gift of a word of knowledge. We have all of these gifts that God has given us. And these are also weapons because when I encounter whoever is in the place where I have my measure of rule and sphere of authority, when I'm moving in the gifts of the spirit, I'm releasing something. Something. I'm praying something. I'm declaring something that's impacting their life that is used to pull them out of the darkness into the light of mm-hmm. heaven. And so that's part of our arsenal. We have faith. Everything operates by faith. It operates by faith in our identity concerning who we are in him. So we're not, I'm not talking about a fleshly uh, labor, a fleshly walk. I'm talking about the fact that we are spirit beings that live in an earth suit that are here on spiritual assignment to impact the nations of the world. And we must be like the Davids, that we must uh, work, cooperate with heaven to complete our assignment. And then we do what David did. And then we go to sleep. Yeah, oh, that's so good, Venner. Thank you so much for explaining that. Thank you for writing The Next Level Believer. Can you tell uh, um, our listeners and viewers how they can get a copy of your book and how can they connect with you? They can get a copy of my book on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, wherever fine books are sold. They can go to my website and order a copy of the book. They can get it directly from Chosen Books. So you can order directly uh, from the publisher. And I really do encourage uh, prayer. I encourage ministries, prayer ministries, prophetic teams. I encourage you to use this book as a training resource. I'm using it in my ministry right now as a training resource from from cover to cover. We're using this book to bring us into a greater level of understanding. They can follow me on social media, on uh, Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook. Uh, My handle is the same, Dr. Venner Austin. My tag is uh, asterisk I am Dr. VJ Austin. Okay. And I'll have that in the show notes. So all they have to do is click on it and then they can follow you and they can get to your website. Um, So I just, I like to ask all of my guests, if there's something that God has put on their heart that they'd like to declare, pray, or release over our viewers and listeners before we end today's show. Since you and I have been talking, I've just been filled up with this um, word voice. And I've been just understanding that for your listeners today and those that will watch, uh, God is wanting to do something with your voice. And so, Father, I pray for every individual that is listening, that is watching. I activate their prophetic voice. I decree that in this decade, this era of the voice, I decree creed that by faith, their voice is coming alive in a new way. Whether they are mom at home taking care of their children, they will prophesy and declare the word of the Lord over their children. Whether they are a a CEO running a Fortune 500 company, they will find that way that they declare the word of the Lord to those that are connected to them as employees. Father, I decree that no matter where we are in government, no matter where we are in education, no, no matter where we are in media, arts, and entertainment, we will declare the word of the Lord. So I speak to our prophetic voice and I, and I command by the power of God that your voice comes alive in a new way. I speak to prophets that have become discouraged and you're in the cave. I decree and declare over you. It is time for you to exit that cave and take your place and begin to declare the word of the Lord. So by faith, I send a word of activation to your life and to your ministry and and I decree that you will live the remainder of your days from next level to next level, mm-hmm. and you will have great influence in the earth in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Amen. Oh, Venner, it was such an honor to have you on the show today. Thank you so much. I really, I really appreciated Next Level Believer. It's advanced strategies for godly kingdom influence. And a lot of the stuff that you talked about actually mirrors what I wrote in my book too. And I love that we're both chosen authors. So people go get these books, support the chosen book authors. Um, (laughs) um, So Venner, thank you. It was really an honor. I just, I was so delighted 
delighted to have you on the show and I will put in the show notes and I love that um, declaration and prayer over our voices and reclaiming our voices. Um, so I thank you for that. I, yeah. I appreciate that. Well, thank you for listening to Dare to Hear the podcast where we encourage you to dare to hear the voice of God. I'm Debbie Kitterman. If you've been blessed in any way, we would love for you to share this podcast episode so we can get the message out about uh, Venner and her book, Next Level Believer. Also, we would love if you have subscribed to our YouTube channel or your favorite um, our podcast on your favorite listening station. And uh, really, we look forward to having you join us next week on another episode of Dare to Hear. Until then, God bless and goodbye. Thank you.